In this video, I'm going to be taking you through the rebuild and upgrade process on a worn 8274 high mount winch. Here at Mad Mat 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell so you can get those notifications. So on my 80 series race car, I'm going to be fitting up this 8274 high mount winch. And one of the sponsors of my race team is Roadrunner Off-Road. And one of their new brands to the market is the Australian made winch gear brand. So in this video, we're using the winch gear upgrades to beef up my winch so that it's competition ready using their components. And this video is all about fitting those components into this winch, the procedures, the techniques, the tips, and along the way, we'll be talking about some of the upgrades and why they have developed some of the solutions they have. Now, everything at Winch Gear is Australian made and Australian designed in Melbourne. And as Australians, we're very proud of that. I've never actually run a winch that is built to this level. All of my winches have been low mount, so I am really, really excited to get this winch together, get it on the race car and get out there and give it a go. Some of the bigger picture things that are going on here. Firstly, it's going to have an extended winch drum. The standard drum is considerably shorter and it, the standard drum also has a larger diameter in here. This has an air spool modification in this drum. So the air will come in here and inside there, there's a clutch and a, and a air cylinder that engages and disengages the, the Chrome Molly um, activation devices and gear sets that are in there. So it's, it's absolutely as beefy as strong, well and truly designed. And it, I'm not gonna stress this winch out, I don't reckon. The other area of significant upgrade is the brake shaft. They're a common failure point in competition winches, particularly in regards to the cam profile. And they've removed the reduction here, which normally holds the, the retainer plate where this steps down. So that was a weak area, they've removed that. So this has got some other great innovations in there with the way the O-ring sits and so on. And at the end of the day, what you and I need to know is that this is going to be as strong as it's going to do the job and give us excellent performance. So we're going to go through installing that and modifying the winch housings to take that upgraded brake. Um, naturally, because we're installing the free spool, we get rid of the normal uh, free spool lever. It'll all be a switch on the dash. You'll flick that, air will come into here, you're in free spool. So we, this is all the, re the removal part of that and the modification for that. Uh, we've also got, with the brakes, we've got larger surface area brake pads. Uh, for the brake mechanism, so we'll go through that as well. So this winch was made on the 8th working day of October 1972. I was born in December 69. I'm 51 years old. <laughs> this thing's nearly as old as me. The funny thing is, I've stripped it down and all of the components are like brand new. I don't think this winch has done much more than tour around Australia on the front of a few four wheel drives. All of the gears are showing very minimal wear, a little bit of corrosion, but nothing to be concerned about. And absolutely phenomenal. So I've stripped it down and I've, a lot of the components are getting replaced, you know, through the kit from winch gear and I've, gone and got the top hat and the core components here all vapor blasted so that we get that nice aluminium finish and once the winch is built I'm actually going to clear coat that I'll clean it all up and give it a clear coat to protect that finish it just looks nice you know it's 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 sort of old technology that's going to just look fantastic on the front of the 80 series race car so I'm really excited to to do that so I'm I'm hoping this is going to be a really informative video it's going to be technical it's going to be detailed and it's probably going to be fairly long just because it, there's a bit of a process in there. But here's the thing. I don't think this is beyond anybody who's got a, got a basic set of tools 
and a little bit of you know mechanical nous about you, I reckon you're going to be able to watch this video, maybe watch it through a few times. Um, I'm going to link to another tutorial down below that's a pictorial tutorial. I'm going to give you a bunch of resources so that at the end of the day you can go and buy a winch gear kit and you can go through the process and build your own winch at home. All right, so that's enough of that. Let's get into this and we're going to start by starting to get the housing ready to take the brake upgrade. So the very first step is grab your kit like this. It's got, you know, some O-rings, a seal, some all the bearings in there. It's got a spring, etc. Grab out of that kit that bronze bush. See it there? Okay, grab that and put it in the freezer. The reason we're doing that is that's going to shrink down so that when we come to the time where we're going to fit it into our housing in here, it'll go in nice and easy. You see, they've made that bronze bush a bit larger than necessary so that it has a really nice tight fit into the housing here. One of the problems can be that bush begins to rotate in the housing. So you can fit that in there with a retaining Loctite, or you can even go to the extent of drilling and tapping and using a grub screw in there to locate and lock that bush in place. Now, when you get the kit, it's going to come with your instructions. Read them. Don't tell anybody you've read them. And I'm not gonna use them in, in this video, but. <laughs> No, follow the instructions, it makes life easy, you know that. All right, so what we're going to be doing now is in your kit will be this plate here. Okay, so grab that. And we're going to fit that up into this section of the housing. This is gonna require some drilling and tapping. So what I've done is I've taken that plate and I've clamped it in place here. Now, really important that you have the plate here level with this surface here, not the raised section. This raised section is about sealing the top hat to the lower case. So line that up nice and level with that surface across there. And inside here, you want the circles to be even. You'll notice that the aluminium spacer is actually a different diameter. Don't worry about that, just make sure it's even and centered around the main hole being this one. So now you get a 6.5 millimeter drill bit and we're going to use that to find, basically locate where we're going to drill in this point here and this point here. All we're looking to do is basically put a start point in there. You do not drill through the housing with your 6.5. So what we're going to do now is take a 2.5 millimeter drill bit and we're going to drill through those marks through the rear plate. What we're doing at this step is creating the pilot hole that we'll then tap in that rear plate that I've got down under here. Make sure that plate doesn't move when you're drilling the hole through. So having put the 2.5 mil holes through there, we now take the wedge plate off, get your marking pen and mark it so that you know which way it's got to go on. I'm just going to write case. So I know that goes to the case now. Take a three millimeter drill bit and drill through the housing. The kit will come with an M3 tap. So take that and now you're going to tap the holes in that plate. A little bit of tapping lubricant won't hurt. Do a test fit of your screws. Then run through, I've just got a drill bit, can't find my deburring tool at the moment, and just deburr the holes. And that is now ready for assembly. 
So once you've deburred all of the holes on the plate and on the housing, then get some brake clean or similar and just clean any grease residue, residue off the thread areas and dry that. Then get a suitable Loctite and then we will fit this up to the case. Get both screws started before you tighten anything up. And now you can see we've got the two screws in place there, lock tight it in. You can see how that plate's sitting up in there. Lovely, lovely. On to the next step. So the next thing I've done is I've pressed the needle roller into place. It sits down inside there. That's the support for the brake shaft. You may have left your bearing in. You, maybe you didn't have to take it out. Um, in this case, I had the case completely stripped down, so I needed to fit that new bearing. Now I used my little shop press. You could use an arbor press. You could even use your vise. It's really not that difficult to put in there. And uh, that's ready for the brake shaft now. So the next job is to install the bush. This bush goes into the housing here and it supports the drum um, on that end of the drum. Okay, so the way I've done it, I've put a very slight chamfer or lead on the bush there. Then I get a hose clamp. And just clamp that bush down so you can reduce the size. And get your soft blow hammer and gently tap it down into place. Once it's started, take that hose clamp off. Once we get it down to this level, we need to set the depth of the bush into the housing. The quad ring, which is a rubber, like a rubber O-ring, is going to sit on top of the bush there. And then the plastic yellow plastic spacer with the lip down in this case against the quad ring is going to sit in place there so the bush needs to go down far enough that this yellow bush sits down into the housing that's all you've got to achieve so there's no specific dimension just keep tapping this down until you achieve that spacing so that's all assembled now I'm going to take the yellow and ring and the quad ring out and set them aside until they're needed later. My bush has ended up essentially flush with the inside of the housing, so that might be a tip for when you do yours. Now the next part of the process, you're going to feel like you need about another four or five pairs of hands, but you can do it on your own. Okay, the easiest way to get your head around this process is get the components that you need and lay them out like I have here. So you need your housing, set it so that the pawl section or the brake section is facing up like this. This is your main gear. See this nose section here, the protruding section? That's going to go up and place that into the housing. Just set that right down the bottom for the moment. Grab this plate, and you'll see there's two dimples on it. They're going to go down and go in underneath that gear. Just slide the plate into place under there. You'll see the keyhole slot, that'll align with the needle roller bearings. Don't worry too much about that a moment, as long as it's in there. The next thing, you're going to grab your intermediate gear, which is this one here. The nose on the intermediate gear goes up facing the brake mechanism. Slide that into place roughly like that. This washer's got a rebate, which will face upwards, and then the circlip will go on the underside. It feels a little bit counterintuitive, but that's the way you assemble it. Take the washer and the circlip Slide them in underneath the intermediate gear, but above the main gear. Take your brake shaft, drop that down through the middle of all of those components. Just wiggle it through. Then, 
stand the unit up like this. Now we can just wiggle the components together and you'll find that it all sort of slides together until you have the groove for the circlip appear in the brake shaft. Take a pair of circlip pliers and you can just put that circlip on. So you can see now we've got the brake shaft, the circlip, the spacer, the intermediate gear and that's all assembled ready to go. Remember how the very first thing we did was put that bronze bush into the freezer? Now it's time. So grab that bronze bush and you'll drop it down over the brake shaft into place. Now I've got my old bush and I can use that just to tap the new bush into place. The bush has to go in far enough that the lip seal can sit down on top of that and get to the right height. So you want to make sure that the bush is into the housing suitably. Now the lip seal measures at five millimeters, so we want a protrusion of five. Now it's time to put the lip seal in. Now, when we're doing that, we want to be really careful. We don't damage the seal on any of these sharp edges on the cam. So obviously a little bit of lubrication on the seal is always going to help. And then by holding the small gear and rotating the larger gear, you'll get the cam to rise out of the housing just a little bit. And then put the seal on and just gently rotate it as you press it onto the shaft and it finds its new home nice and easy then you can take your old bronze bush again and just gently tap that into place and once that seals perfectly home that's absolutely sorted that's never going to be a problem now a lot of guys are looking for absolute the best solution one of the things that can happen in this area, and I mentioned it earlier, is the bush can rotate. What you can do is drill and tap an M4 grub screw into this area, dimple the bush a little bit, and then when you put that grub screw in there, it'll stop that bush rotating in the main housing. The other thing you could do is assemble it with a retaining Loctite if you wanted to take that extra step. In my opinion, the guys at Winch Gear have made that bush that little bit tighter in the housing so in my opinion none of that's going to be required provided that bush is getting lubricated which it's going to be. I forgot to mention earlier that I put a bit of grease on the needle roller bearing on the brake shaft before I put the brake shaft into place. Have we started to have fun yet? I am. Okay the next bit is we're going to assemble the brake mechanism so grab the lower brake pad or disc shall we call it put it in place put the brake pad on then grab the ratcheting wheel and this goes on so that the teeth are facing clockwise okay like that see what I'm doing okay goes down otherwise it's just not going to work next we place on another brake pad place in your spring and then you've got the top spring seat with the obvious the big flat surface facing upwards. Next grab all of the ratchet or bearing balls. Now what I've done is I grabbed a finger full of grease and dropped that into the plastic bag and smeared that around. I know you may be a little concerned that you know I'm putting grease near a braking surface. Shortly you're going to be putting mud and all sorts of other nasties near it. A little bit of grease is the least of your worries. They're going to work just fine. Now the boys at Winch Gear probably provide you with one or two more bearings than you'll actually need. So I'm just going to leave three in the bag there. I might take that back off and reposition these bearings to the outside face. And that grease is there just to hold them in place whilst you get them set out. You want to get as many of the balls in there as will physically fit without anything being tight, obviously. 
Okay, and I'm going to get one more. So I'm going to have two spare balls, and that's, I guess, if you have a hissy fit and throw one across the workshop or something. Negative. I'm taking one of those balls out. It, that extra one doesn't fit. So I've got three extra balls. Okay, so that's there. We put that on. Now we take this top disc and put that in place. What we're going to do now is clamp this together because we've got to set up the, the, um, par, uh, the ratcheting pawl. So just clamp that together so that brake is now assembled and ready to go. And then you'll be able to lift it off like that. And that clamp is just holding it all together for you. So once you get the brake mechanism off, put another clamp on there to hold it all together so the balls don't come out of place. Now we're going to assemble the ratcheting pawl. So take the pawl, pre-grease it, and then put it on so that the foot of the pawl is facing the brake shaft. Take the spring and put the long leg down into there, over the center column and around the back side here like this. Take the cover, put that in place, then take the washer and the nut and clamp it all down. Okay, lovely. And now the pawl will load up. Now we can take our brake mechanism, take that back clamp off, holding it all together. Then put the two keyways into place to locate the braking disc to the shaft. Then you can put your retaining nut on. Now we can remove the clamp. The brake mechanism doesn't need any shimming or anything like that. So long as the ratcheting mechanism mechanism is free and can move around like this, that's just fine. There's enough drive in the camshaft to well and truly activate the brake if it's set up like this. How good's that? So that is now the bottom part of the winch all but assembled. So now we're going to assemble the top hat. So this has got this gear set in here which has got a couple of needle rollers down in the middle here. Now with the winch gear upgrade, they actually install three needle rollers down into that gear there. So that gives the shaft a lot more support. But not only that, one of the problems that can develop is if you only have the two needle rollers in there, they can walk to one end of the, of the shaft and then it cocks over and obviously then you've got a problem. So by having that extra length, that helps support the whole gear set a lot better. We're also going to install the free spool delete, which is this unit here. We've got the old gear from the drive motor, which goes in place, this aluminium slug, which sits on top there, or spacer. Now with the spacer, it's got a raised section on the top here that goes away from the, well in this configuration, it goes up. Let's put it that way. This sealed bearing is your first motor support. That's going to press into the housing at that point there. We also have these little stainless steel cover plates. There's two different types. One's the earlier one, earlier style. And this is the later style with the two screws. On my winch, that's going to go in that position there. So once the shaft goes in, that blanks off the shaft. Now I just want to point out to you, one, of the, one side of your holes will have a reduction in diameter and that's to stop the shaft from coming too far through on that gear set. So just be aware of which side is which 
so that you assemble that shaft correctly. So I've pressed the new bearings into the gear set. I've drilled and tapped here so that we can put our cover on over the top of that, see? And press the shaft in and that's rotating absolutely beautifully. Now one of the other things to check is just make sure that there's no sort of side play or slop in any of that. And when you put the delete in, make sure that the gear mesh looks correct down there. You don't, basically you don't want anything too misaligned because that then loads this up. If that loading does start to happen in the side there, you can just pack out the either side as necessary of that shaft so that this gear sits where you need it to sit. Now when we go to putting in the, the, the delete, put a little bit of um, sealant of some sort around there just to seal moisture and so on and so forth from getting into the winch. And a handy little tip is to take a shaft, and I'm just using an Allen key, shove it through there as you assemble it. And that just ensures that aluminium spacer goes into place nice and easy for you. Anyway guys, if you'd like to get your hands on some of this gear, well there's going to be a link in the description below to Roadrunner Off-Road. Check them out, they've got a huge range of of four-wheel drive stuff, oh, it's just a huge range, it's all there, check it out, but they've also got that winch gear stuff, which is, yeah, you know, that's pretty good gear, I can't wait to test it out good and proper. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, I'd really appreciate it as a way of you just showing me that you support what I do here at Mad Matt Full Drive. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails.